What's good? We back. It's the Boss Clinic more. Y'all know what it is. We back grinding. Had a great live stream video we just did. Um, I want to do two more tonight, man. For sure, I'm going to do one with uh with the fellas again. See you want to jump on. Say we get some new faces in new places. And, um, you know, find a good topic to speak on today once again. But, um, you know, you know, basically you see the title. is Al Heyman Force and Danny Garcia, Sean Porter, winner to face Earl, the true Spence Jr., and I believe that's what it is, man. I know Triple H twelve hundred, he, he known as a uh, punch quotes right now, said that um, you know, it was rumors that, you know, Al Hammond forced Adrian Broner to face Sean Porter. That was the only option fight that he had and he had to take the fight. And I think it's a scenario here because not only is Sean and Danny locking horns for the WBC, like I said before, um I asked people, did a video said, Should we boycott Sean Porter and Danny Garcia? fight until they commit to fighting Earl Spence Jr. in the near future or perhaps next if he gets past Carlos Ocampo. And um, a lot of people agree. Some people disagree. But, um, you know, one thing for sure we all agree, we want to see the winner take on Earl Spence, you know. And now both fighters have, on, on the drop of a dime, changed their uh, tune, you know. Uh, I believe it was Fight Hype caught up with Danny Swift Garcia at, in, in Philadelphia for the Joshua Greer and Devin Haney uh co-featured card and you know he he sound very uh very uh you know ready for earl spence he sound like he wanted to commit to fighting the truth he said after you know he fight earl spence it ain't too much to do he said he ain't looking at jesse he ain't looking at adrian which adrian danny garcia you know would be a good fight adrian broner if broner continues to win or you know save face still be popular that's a fake that's a fight that they had that broner put up a face off of premier boxing champions uh took a, a photo shot of them facing off, and uh, Danny Garcia cutting his throat uh, with Broner. And Al Heyman asked, you know, according to Danny Garcia, told Broner to take that shit down. So it may be a fight they'd be planning, even though it was a couple years ago. But Danny said he ain't interested. He said once he beat Earl Spence, he don't care about unifying no more. It's basically he want to go to 54 and win the title, which I think he'll be dog food at 54 with the, uh, you know, top dogs, you know, you know, Minguia, Charlo, um, Swift Hurd, you know, Laura, I don't see him beating any of them guys, you know, not for no title. But once Heard and move up or Charlo move up or something like that happen, maybe he can get in there and beat, you know, second tier type of guys. But, yeah, that's what he said he wanted. Then yesterday we talked about Kenny Porter. He finally verbally committed to um, to his son facing uh, Earl Spence and said they want to fight after this. Wanna be, if they beat Danny, they want to fight Earl Spence. They want to fight Terrence Crawford. You know, first, you know, he, he wouldn't say Earl Spence's name. He would make up lies and say, Premier Boxing Champions are, are, are uh, hiding Earl Spence, protecting him. Said that they paid over uh, a quarter million to a uh, sanctioned body field to the WBC and they wanted a WBC shot. That they couldn't fight for the IBF because, you know, the IBF can sue or some stuff, super stuff he's saying like that, which money talks bullshit walks. I'm pretty sure the IBF, with them, them cleaned out rankings that Earl Spence did off of fear and clout, would have, would have sanctioned Carol, uh, Sean Porter. Unless it's something that Kenny and Sean are telling us that they had a run in with the WBC. So if they didn't have any problems with WBC, and if ain't nothing about failing drugs, there's no fishy nature, they owe the IBF, excuse me, the IBF money. The IBF is sanctional. It's all about the money, you know. Um, Sean wasn't a bad ambassador for the IBF title, even though it should have been Kell Brook. But, you know, uh, Kell Brook pulled out versus Devin Alexander. That's no here, no there. But, um, but yeah, you know, both guys starting to change their tune now, man. It's, it's a little bit different in these interviews now. Now Earl Spitz's name is not so... Uh, you know, feared, you know, they had like, it was demonic at, at some point that they couldn't even, you know, say the guy's name and the guy and Earl Spence was calling both of these guys out last year. Sean, he called Sean out immediately after beating Kale Brook, you know, Sean Porter and Kenny went over to assist, you know, Earl Spence. And that's probably the prime example. Keep your, uh, uh, friends close, but your enemies closer. And Sean basically was like, man, well, I'm, I don't want none of that right now, you know, and that is what it is. You know, it was rumors about Earl Spence, dog walking, Sean, and, and sparring. And um, Danny Garcia, man, we already know since, since the Matisse fight and the Marisa Herrera scare, um, he really ain't been, you know, looking for elite competition no more. Once he beat Matisse, it was like Danny Danny Garcia hunger and just went away. You know, and that's real facts, man. He wasn't the same hunger, uh, hungry fighter that he once was. And like I said, Earl Spence was dragging his name through the mud and the dirt. And almost every interview that people ask Earl Spence, anybody, Danny Garcia, you going to answer the knock on the door? What's up, Danny Garcia? What's up? 
Danny Garcia wouldn't say nothing in no interviews. He wouldn't mention Earl Spence's name or nothing like that. So right there, you know, even if it's no animosity or it's no fear between the fighters or whatever it may be, it's created because you're not acknowledging a real threat, a real challenge. The new kid on the block, you kind of, you know, brushing them off. And you can do, you can brush certain guys off when they don't have the credentials. You know what I'm saying? They could brush Earl off and say, well, he got 15, he 15 and 0. You know, he don't have no title. You can brush Earl off. Well, he got to beat Kale Brook to get that title first. And then when he beats Kale Brook impressively, it's like now, you know, the new kid on the block is basically above you because he holds the title. And after you lost your title to Keith Thurman, you know, and Sean Porter lost his title to Kale Brook, he ain't, they've been titleless for a while, titleless for a while. Now it's like, now you got to acknowledge this guy. You don't want a title shot? You know, got to the point where, where Sean was saying, like, oh, you know, I'm not coming back for nobody but Keith Thurman. I mean, he could, Andre Berto. He could have fought Earl Spence then, I believe. Then he could fought Adrian Granales. He could have fought Earl Spence then for a title. With more of the Granales fight than Berto. Then, you know, from the Granales fight, he claimed that he had a hand injury. Said he wasn't going to come back until he fought Keith Thurman. Then, you know, uh, Danny fought Brandon Rios. He came back after a year off. Saying that he, Al, he told Al Heyman that he wasn't fighting none last year. He needed time off and enjoy his life, okay? He beats Brandon Rios after a nice little layoff, about a year layoff. You know, he jumped Sean Porter in the WC rankings, you know? Keith Thurman had a uh, fight scheduled for this weekend, May 19th. It's supposed to be a split thing, a, a split main event from the Barclays with him versus whoever the hell he was going to fight. And then it was going to be uh, Adonis Stevenson and Badu Jack. Now we got Gary Russell, Jojo Diaz taking that spot. He pushes back. He probably be, he probably be coming back in the summer with a tentative date that we don't heard or no opponent, you know. Ain't heard too much about it, though, but he supposed to be coming back this summer. So when all that happened, you know, Sean Porter – Instead of fighting Earl Spence and getting the title, you know, his dad line saying they spent over a quarter million in sanctioning body fees, which I don't believe that. Um, you know, then, you know, the, the WBC, you know, they ordered Sean and Danny, uh, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia. They ordered this fight last year as well, but it's for an interim title until Keith Thurman came back. Uh, Danny, Sean Porter was always down for the Danny Garcia fight since Danny Garcia moved up and called him out and said he was tailor made f uh, for him, you know, but he wasn't fighting for an interim title. Now it's a real title. They forcing Danny Garcia hand. He got to take the fight. Um, and I think Al Heyman, you know, is like, look here, man. You know, sat them both, both down, like, or, or called them both. And like, y'all got to fight Earl Spence, man, after this. You know, I'm not going to be wasting no more of this premier boxing champion money and to y'all bum bashers, man. Because after this, it's, it's really nobody for you guys to fight. You guys don't want to fight Terrence Crawford, especially Danny Garcia. Um, you know, you've been non-committal about him. We don't want to see you versus Jesse Vargas. You know, Broner, y'all can't make the catch weight for Broner. Probably, you know, there's no other fight but to go with this fight. I don't have any more fighters for you. You know, and this guy, Earl Spence, we are paying this guy, you know, just, you know, just just to keep him happy and not sign with Golden Boy, Eddie Hearn, or Top Rank. Because he easily can just sign with Top Rank, and you guys would probably be happy, but I'd be losing one of the biggest and best talents in boxing. Before I do that, i fucking sacrifice you sacrificial lambs to Earl Spence, you know. He going to be going far, more further in this sport than both of you clowns, so... Look here, whoever wins this fight, you better strap your big boy nuts on, put your thunder draws on, and fight Earl Spence. And I think that's what it is. Now you're hearing these guys, Earl Spence is incorporated into their vocabulary now. When before, it was a bad word, it was it was a demonic, it was, you had to rebuke it from, from, from your vocabulary. Now, they can say Earl Spence. Oh, I want Earl Spence. What's the difference between the, between the Kell Brook fight and now? From the Lamont Peterson fight and now? It's no difference, you know? A lot of them guys had they, they toes and, and fingers, all their fingers crossed, for uh, Carol, him to be Kell Brook. And, you know, if he showed any vulnerability versus Kell Brook, versus Lamont Peterson, you know, that was your point to jump in and get and, and build a blueprint on him and expose him. But it was no blueprint. A lot of fans said, oh, Kell Brook exposed him. If he exposed him, you know, you know why the cockroaches are still in, in hiding? Why are they still scared of him? You know, it's just finding it funny that Earl Smith's name has now become and now been, uh, been able to, to speak in these guys' vocabulary, man. Real talk. They weren't saying that man's name before, you know, this this fight was ordered and these contract talks talk. I think Al Heyman told him, like, look here, guys want to fight the guy. You know, no two ways around it this time, fellas. You know, it is what it is. Because remember Andre Berto, the beginning of last year, after the first year of Premier Boxing Champions, it was hot, but it was a full of mismatches and the undercard unknown fighters or lower name fighters or little known fighters was better than the actual big fights. And he told him, like, go back and watch the interview for Berto. If I could put it up, I I I put it up here. He said that um, or in the boxing clinic uh, Facebook uh, page, he says that um, 
Alan Heyman called a meeting, told everybody that you got to fight everybody now. Ain't no more cherry picking. I'm paraphrasing there. And I think this is Al Heyman taking control of uh, the situation. Being a manager, but also being the head of Premier Boxing Champions, you know, he probably told him, like, look here, man, I got to fight this guy, man. And now you slowly starting to hear Sean Porter call, say Errol Smith's name, his dad. He said, we're going to fight Errol Spence, you know, yeah, yeah, Errol Spence. Before, in interviews, he was asking interviews not to ask him about Errol Spence, you know. But now that they getting the title shot, you know, now, you know, they might be forced to unify with Earl Spence. Danny Garcia saying that, you know, he ready for Earl Spence and this is going to happen. And, you know, after, after fighting Earl Spence, ain't nothing but to do but go to 154. You know, Kenny was a little bit more vocal about fighting Terrence Crawford than Danny has. Danny says he don't want no parts of Terrence Crawford. And, you know, he don't sound like he want to be undisputed. Kenny and Sean sound like they want to go for undisputed, you know. At the end of the day, Kenny and Sean don't have nothing to lose, though. They've been beat up before a couple times and a draw with uh, Julio Diaz. So what they got to lose? You know, Danny Garcia, he been beat by Keith Thurman, you know, moving up to 147. But pretty much he still got his popularity and he got he pulls a, a good ratings on, 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 on Showtime or Premier the Champions when he fight. But I'm telling you guys, Al Heyman, like, y'all motherfuckers got to see Earl Spence. And I think that's why you're starting to hear these guys say Earl Spence's name. And, and again... I mean, well, as well, they're going to they gonna continue to hear Earl Smith's name and the build-up in his fight. The press conference, all type of stuff. It's going to be almost pr- uh, imperative pressure on them to fight Earl Smith next. But, uh, you know, let me know what y'all think. It's the Boston Clinic and more. We're going to be going live a little bit later um, with the fellas, see if they want to jump on and do our thug thizzle. But, um, yeah, I definitely appreciate everybody for rocking out with us, weeding out the bums and, and the good boxing fans. I want you here, the casual boxing fans. You can learn something. And I can learn something from y'all. And all sports fans, man, y'all know we do more than more than uh, the boxing talk. And I'm working on an Uncle Tom uh, video as well, man, for everybody who's looking out for that Food for Thought video. TBC and more, we done.